Hey guys, Shaber 1000 here. Today, we're gonna open up this box and see what we got in it. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, I got something else to show you that's really neat. So stick around, let's see what's going on here. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to show you, if you watch Monkey's Chin, you pro channel, you've probably already seen this. I got her a new reel, which was supposed to be my reel. Because I, I was looking for a 33, a, a vintage 33, a Zebco 33, a classic, anything like that. Well, I ran across this thing. It's not it's not vintage it's not classic it's brand new it is a bite alert okay so i was showing her this and um she said whoa man that's pretty cool that'll help me let me know when i get a bite and i'm like yeah i said you want one she's like yeah yeah go ahead and get me one it was 20 bucks six dollars shipping or something i don't know I got to look and it's the only one they had. It's the only one I can find except one other one through Zebco, which was 60 some dollars. Okay, 66 bucks or something like that. So I ordered it for her. She got hers yesterday. This is a cool thing. There's a little switch here. Now, Man, this thing feels smooth. It feels nice. Okay, there's a string. I don't know if you can see that, but there it is. All right, so if you get a bite, a little tug on there, that's what it does. It lets you know you've got a bite. Now, I wanted one just because they're cool. I know when I get a bite, but anyway, that's monkeys. I'm going to be putting it on her on her rod now now this is mine and I did find a vintage Zebco 33 which was sixteen bucks I think plus almost ten dollars in shipping so it was about the same amount as hers but here's mine just an old just an old Zebco 33 now this thing's in pretty good shape it's got some wear on it but it's in really good shape and on the bottom can you see that it says made in the USA right there made in USA all right so this thing i've been looking for one of these for a while these things are just great all around reels um now this one is also a zebco 33 but it's it's just it's plastic uh this one's metal with two rivets it's just i don't like it so i'm gonna put my string on here so let's check this out if i remember right inside here uh, there was one of these for 20 bucks about the same thing it was metal on here for 20 bucks and it was it was in horrible condition so okay so it's got a cover lock on it right there i'll have to uh loosen that screw to take the cover out of or take the cover off of it um let's go ahead and do that a monkey's already got line on it so i think for her review i'll leave that line on it i think it's 10 pounds something like that um so i'll just leave it on there There we 
go. Now this is what I was looking at right here. There's a little pin there. Can you see that pin? Now that comes out like that when you wind the string. Now over time, I've had a bunch of these. I love them. Over time, it'll get a little, like a little cut worn in there from your string, okay? This one's in perfect condition as far as that goes. The other one that I looked at for 20, which wasn't in this good a shape, uh, they didn't have they didn't have the cover off of it. So I was like, no, I'll, I'll just go with this one. Um, it is it does have bearings in it, and the way this works, this little lock, this right here, right in there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I'm in the sun. I got, a, I got a hood coming for this thing and a new lens because I broke mine. I'll show that to you when that comes in. See that little lock there? What this does is when you turn that, see the lock comes out? That little tab right there. And what that does is it holds the cap on. Okay, it just puts pressure on that and holds the cap on. So, I think it's... Like that. So, it just puts a little pressure on that cap so the cap does not come off on you. So, there we go. And then the back comes off real easy. Wow, it's it's a very good shape in there. All metal gears. I love the drag on these things. There's the drag. So you don't have that little wheel up on top. I hate that wheel on top. I mean, these drags are real, they're real sensitive, okay? So this looks like it's oiled up pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna have to mess with it. So I'm not going to. And this just goes on. There's two little tabs there. And it just goes on like that. Okay. All right, cool. Now, what I'm gonna do, I hope my neck's not hitting the mic. I'm sorry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna put mine on here. And I'm just gonna wind this up off of this into my reel for now because I forgot to get new string but this this string's not that old it'll be fine okay so I'm just going to cut my hook my hook off of here got Bruno in the boat he's right behind me he wanted outside today it's a beautiful day so I'll set this over there, put my knife away. Now I'm gonna take, go ahead and take this off. Just, just loosen that. She keeps asking me, will it fit our rods? Will they fit our rods? I'm like, <laughs> fit any rod. <laughs> it's universal. Okay, and she'd ask me again. Think those will fit our rods? Yes, I, I think they will. <laughs> and you just put the new one on there. And they're just like that. And screw that back in there. The rods ain't too bad. I mean, for cheap Walmart stuff, they're okay. It's not my favorite. I like the, uh, the Ugly Sticks or, or Abu Garcia's. Uh, so this is a... Uh, because the they're they're real sensitive up here see this is real thick i mean you know it, it'll bend but an ugly stick you can pretty much bend it backwards and they're real sensitive up here for when you got a bite so what i'm going to do now i got this reel off just going to release it so the line comes out 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. See this comes apart. I do like like that. A lot of guys don't like them because when you're casting, sometimes they'll they'll get loose and they'll come out on you. And if you if you're not paying attention, it'll come out and you got to reel it back in and put it back in. I don't have too much of an issue with that. So what we're going to do? I'm just going to run it through this first eye right here then I want to run it through my bezel a lot of people call these a veil that's not a veil guys it's a bezel <coughs> and I'm just gonna just gonna make me a slip knot right here this might take a second I'm not gonna say it's just I don't know it's just gonna make a slip knot Just got to be tight enough to start winding because, I mean, if you get down to that far and that fish is still going with it, you're probably not going to get him anyway, guys. <laughs> so. I'm keeping an eye on my batteries. These, uh, these wireless mics I got, they're phenomenal. They're awesome and I love them but they sure do go through batteries but they are they are the professional grade so see i keep hitting these lapel mics you know i keep my beard and my chin keeps hitting it so i'm sorry about that it's a little breezy Well, I really, really have to sharpen this knife, man. There we go. Because you don't want a big tail on it because you just want a slip knot. See how that's slipping? Because if you get a big tail on it, it it'll, um, it'll want to tangle on you. So I'm just going to slide this. Slide this over here like that. Pull it tight. <laughs> Not that tight. <laughs> ah, fail. All right, let's do this again. Do this again. Just put it in there. I should have said just pull it snug, not tight. Just snug it up like that. Alright, now we're gonna take our bezel. Not veil. I called it a veil for years. My dad kept going, it's a bezel, son. It's not a veil. Veil's on an open face. Alright, Dad. So then as I got older, I was like, he's right. That's not a veil. A veil flips over. You know, like a wedding veil, it flips. This is a bezel. Just cover something up. All right, now, I'm just going to put a little pressure. I'm going to hold it right there. Just kind of like I'm winding in a fish. Winding, reeling in a fish. And it'll come off the other reel. See? And I'm just going to transfer it over to this one. I think I'll leave hers... Uh, hers is pretty strong. I'll see if she likes it better. I put the yellow on so she can see it better. We'll just have to see whichever one she likes better. This yellow is 40 pound. I know you're not supposed to put 40 pound on these things, but it's fine. Um, but we'll just have to see what she likes. And we'll go from there. Whichever one she likes, I'll leave on for her. So, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over. And then we'll hook it all back up. Okay, guys. So, I don't have a hook on here, but I do have a sinker on here. Let's give this a cast and see. Holy shit. I'm on the other side of the road over there. 
uh, not even trying that's a good 25 to 30 yards these things just cast nice and smooth I wasn't even trying so if you got a piece of chicken liver or some bait on there these are good bass fishing poles man, or reels man I'm telling you make sure there ain't a car coming here we go Oh, that's way over there. Oh yeah, that's definitely, that was definitely 30 yards without even trying. And if you just want to flick it, if you don't want to go too far, I know you guys probably can't see where it's going, but you can just, um, you know, just give it a little, and you can stop it with your thing there so you don't get hung up in a snag. Oh, I love these. I love these reels, man. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a good... I wasn't even trying. That's a good 50 yards anyway. That that went on the other side of the road up there. Almost to that, that pole. I don't know if you can see that pole up there. In front of Jerry's house there. So. <laughs> I love these things. I'm real happy with it. I think I need to put a little drop of oil in these here because I hear one of them kind of like whistling a little bit and the drags on these things are awesome so I usually set it to where it takes just a little bit to pull it out and then if I need more as I'm fishing you know, then I, I can turn that back, that little knob back as I'm fishing, depending on the size of the fish, you know, so. There we go. All right. One more cast, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Car coming. I want to catch a car. There we go. Maybe a carp, not a car. take out somebody's windshield that'd be pretty embarrassing and expensive but I had to order I dropped my damn camera when we was camping so I had to order another lens that's why it looks so funny because I got a filter on it so I had to order another UV filter not lens the filter and it's also uh, I got it in a kit with the hood that plastic thing that uh, that uh, well it's rubber it also keeps the lens flare down, so. Oh yeah, that's way over there. That is out there, boys. Come on. Oh yeah, cool. Well, that was just in the nick of time. All right, so I'm gonna put my hook on here. And then I'm gonna set monkeys up and we'll give it a couple casts and see how it does. Okay guys, we got monkey set up. Boy, that's a that's a pretty looking good, pretty good looking rod and reel there. Also, you can change this from right-handed to left-handed if you want. I do like that handle. But let's give this a cast. It feels pretty good. Whoops. Oh shit. Man, she's gonna be casting like a pro with this thing, I tell you. That cast as good as mine. Reels nice. Of course this monofilament, you know, always does cast in real smooth. I may go with that on mine. I'm not sure. Oh shit. I didn't hear that hit the ground. It did. Man. Boy, if she casts this thing, this ain't no joke. You can adjust the sensitivity on it. High and low. I'll put it on high for her. Let's, uh, let's turn this on again here. Now when she gets a bite, 
you know it'll do that it also lights up for so at night you know i mean that's that's a little tiny tug because she has trouble seeing her pole you know nice this does have one of those for the uh For the drag, one of those wheels. I really don't like them as much. It does work pretty smooth though. There we go. Alright. Well, hers is done. I'm gonna put the hook on this. I'll be right back with you guys. If I can find another one of these, I'm gonna get me one of these too, so. I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, I wanted to throw this in here real quick. A fun fact, um, the Zebco 33 came out, the, I'll read this to you. The first model 33 were introduced, <coughs> excuse me, in late 1954 or early 1955. At that time, the company would still have been using the name Zero Hour Bomb Company. Okay, that that's what they went by. Uh, if you look them up, um, you can find them online. Um, old ones, they're they're expensive. They're around fifty, seventy-five bucks, but they're they're from the early fifties, and like from the forty, from the late forties, it's still. It, you can look them up under um, Zebco Zero Hour or Zero Hour Bomb Company. Um, in 1956, the name Zebco was officially ad adopted. Zebco still produces a Model 33 to this day. It is, however, very cheaply made in China, which is true. I showed you the new ones we just got not long ago, and, and I, I just don't like them. Um, but mine, as you can see, made in USA. Um, but so that was just a, a fun fact. It, it's hard to date a uh, fishing reel like that. Um, so I don't know what year mine is. Um, I had a similar one that was bought brand new from an old gentleman that I got at yard sale. He still had the receipt for the damn thing. He bought it at a. Um, what was the name of that place? Uh, JC Witt. Was it JC Whitney? out of a magazine no not just Sears, Sears and Roebuck he bought it at Sears and Roebuck uh, in 1967 and that thing still worked like like brand new uh, I think he gave like a dollar 75 for it <coughs> um, I think it was on sale but uh, he bought it brand new um, I used that for many years I, I don't know what I think it got I think it got stolen yeah I believe if I remember right it got stolen so just a fun fact. So I don't know what this one is because they used that same, the same that same style for years and years and years, even up into the '80s. Except in the '80s, now they they weren't metal. They didn't have the metal uh, foot on them. They were plastic. They were all plastic in the '80s. I know because I bought one in '87 or '88, and that's what. And it was new then. It was brand new. Um, so. I don't know, I'm guessing maybe 70s-ish, right in there, um, is what I'm guessing this to be. Maybe it might even be late 60s. Um, like I say, you can't, there's no numbers on them, you can't, you can't tell. Uh, sometimes you can tell by looking at the gears <coughs> and things like that, but it's fine. I don't care, it's, I love it. So, anyway, fun fact, just thought I'd throw that in there for you. Okay, guys, also what this has, uh, down here at the bottom, I'll show it to you. See that hole right there? The little hole, that's a drain hole. Because you know, your line's wet when it's coming in. And that's so, when you're reeling it in, it drips out. Um, I like this thing, so, still haven't taken this off. Uh, I like the reel. Now, I like hers a lot, too. Um, that's a... Uh, And I kind of like the pink rod. You can really see it real well after dark, but that's just a good looking, a good looking setup she's got there. So I got her hooked up. 
Uh, so hopefully, I think one of the biggest problems she has is, and I hate, but, you know, teach his own, right? She'll get a text. She'll be looking at a text. I'll be sitting there watching her pull like that. And then finally, I'll say, hon, she'll look down at her pole. Oh, <laughs> uh, and she's also got to get, she, she won't, um, she won't set the hook by, you know, wait until it's going and giving it a yank. What she does is she'll go, she'll, the pole, she just takes the pole and goes, I'm like, no, you got to yank it and set that hook. So she'll learn, or she's like, she'll see a bird. She'll be watching a bird or looking at the sights, enjoying the weather and whatnot. I'm like, all right, your pole. <laughs> so hopefully this, you know, when it does that, she'll be able to, uh, man, heliko oh, an airplane. Boy, he's low. But uh, hopefully, you know, it'll give her the, the warning she needs that she's getting a bite because that's real sensitive. So that's pretty cool. So that's about all I got for you guys today. So tomorrow, stay tuned for some fishing, weather providing, and providing she don't have a lot of patience tomorrow. Uh, right now, I don't think she has any. So if she don't have any patience, we're going to go. Even if she has one or two, I'm sure she'll want to go. Maybe we'll do some uh, night fishing. And that's also good because she has to keep turning her light on. And because uh, she can't see her pole as well as I can see them. I can see mine, but hers is really good to see, but it, she still has trouble after after dark, you know, seeing her pole. So hopefully this will really help her after dark, you know, ting, ting, and it'll start going off and she can reach down, pick her pole up and be ready for it. So hopefully this will help her. So anyway, there you go, Monk, you're set up. I'm set up. We're going fishing tomorrow, guys. So yeah, thanks for joining me, appreciate it. Uh, that's all I got right now, but um, so we'll do we'll do a full review on these tomorrow And maybe I'll cast hers out a few times see how it how it does see what uh, If I can find another one for 20 bucks, I'm buying it. I don't I don't care. I'm, I'm buying it Because uh, like I said, there's 60 or 60 66 bucks through Zebco uh, Man, it, it feels smooth. It feels right uh, especially with monofilament monofilament line is uh, has always casted smooth it winds in smooth it's just not as strong as the braided it's like I said this is uh this I think is 10 or 12 pound test and it's it's thicker than this braided line that's 40 pounds so you know that's kind of why I like the braided line um, you know there's pros and cons about everything but you know, like the bait casters, they say don't use braided line. Now I have, and I've never had an issue with it. But you shouldn't. The monofilament on a bait caster's good. But I mean, if you if you're going 20 pound test or something like that, you're going for the big fish. You know, uh, the the monofilament just gets so thick. You know what I mean? And then there you go. Now you're having trouble casting that. So, but. You know, like I said, I got I put 40 pounds on these, and the reason why I went with 40 pounds is really not to catch a 40 pound fish. It's because you know we do a lot of river fishing here. There's a lot of snags. She gets up in trees and stuff, and with this stuff, I can actually pull the tree limb down and unhook it. You know what I mean with that 40 pound. Um, so that's why I run 40 pound on it. But we'll give her a shot with the. Uh, at least with the, or I think it's 12 pound, it's 10 or 12 pound test, which is plenty. I mean, I brought, you know, I brought some big catfish, 15, 18 pound catfish in on 10 and 12 pound test. Uh, but I used to run 14 pound and I know I brought, you know, I brought in several 20 pounders, uh, carp, you know, I don't know what they would weigh, but they, you guys know how they get, they're huge. And I, I can bring carp in all day long you just got to fight them a little more you got to play with them a little more you can't just reel them in like you can on this 40 pound but that's okay we'll just see how she likes it and uh if she does i'll just i'll get her you know maybe some 18 pound tests or 20 pound tests um but because i think she's she's getting better at casting she just gotta 
she gets way too far back like this to cast you don't have to you just you know 10 and 2 10 and 2 <laughs> and i had a story my ex one time as I, I was teaching her you know she'd been fishing before but kind of like monkey you know never really fish fish she's like well how do you get that to cast so smooth because she'd be like pump just pretty much throw it right in the water five feet out from her she's like how do you do that so i told her you know you hold that button all right you start about two o'clock when you get to 10 10 o'clock let it go all right she's like okay all right so now give it a cast and get her all baited up she's looking good too man just just perfect she gets to 10 o'clock and she just let's go the whole rod threw the rod right into the lake i'm like oh my god she said what <laughs> you said let it go i said i meant the button release the button so i started going to the truck and she's like where are you going i'm gonna go get a new pole i'll be back he's mine don't throw in the water <laughs> come back mine's all tangled and shit. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so just when you get to 10 let it go she let it go <laughs> you said let it go it's getting a little warm out here now but so anyway hopefully that'll help her and um it's nice and smooth so uh, i think she'll i think she'll like it and um that way she can get you know better at fishing um, so she can catch big fish and bring some big fish in and uh so hopefully um when the fish start hitting good once the river goes down and stuff when the fish starts hitting good we'll do a catch and cook so that'll be fun so stay tuned for more videos like that and um so i'm gonna go ahead and go and get off here and get in the house where it's a little cooler take bruno in and um we'll see you guys soon shea bear the myth the man the legend thanks for watching monk you're ready to go and i'm ready to go We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye and take care.